What's going on Warriors? It's your boy Lionheart and I'm um, ah. <laughs> Oh boy We have got a barn burner today bro We got so much to unpack Oh shit oh. Black Widow. We're gonna get into it. Finally, the movie's out. We can all watch it. Yeah. I'm going in. So, if you don't want to hear spoilers, now is the time to bail. Yeah. And then when you have finished watching it, please come back and look at, you know, my full review. First of all, let's get into it. Best scene of this whole movie. Yeah. The intro. Straight off the bat, the intro of this movie, yeah, when they're showing the intro and um, credits and you're seeing the flashbacks of when they were being indoctrinated, you saw the Red Room um, project being into effect, how they were learning about um, American society and just how to be, act like a normal, um, a not normal child, um, learning etiquette, learning the habits of normal children, how to integrate themselves into society without being um, detected. There's such a fascinating introduction to the movie and it kind of sets you up because you think that's what the movie is going to be and it kind of starts off like that, right? Um, the movie first of all starts off with their family because their family is in America but they are actually sp um, Russian spies, they're trying to steal some um, nanite technology that can um, that does mind control and can make people do what they want, yeah, which is a a, a plot device that i just i don't like it at all right uh, which and i'll get into why i did like that right um they managed to get it at the beginning of the movie which is the red guardian and the iron maiden yeah and the daughters yelena and natasha yeah the black widows yeah as kids and they kill it and then they try to escape from america they managed to escape from america they're being chased by shield then they get to Cuba, and then they get ki and not kidnapped yet, but the the Red Room people are waiting for them. And then you see like the that's when the intro starts, and you just start to see that they're kidnapping um, little girls from all over the world, and just to bring them into the Red Room project. And that's when you start seeing the flashes of what they go through in the Red Room, and it's fascinating. You know, and that introduction shows you that if they really wanted to, they could have made such an incredible, deep, fascinating story, serious story for Black Widow. May I don't know who's met, called the shots, the director, the producer, Scarlett Johansson, the, um, the, the who, but somebody knew exactly what we wanted and i could watch that trailer sorry the introduction yeah intro for the movie over and over and over again it was such an incredible introduction with the music with the visual the visceral uh, visuals of what the black widows go through because there's multiple black widows and then you see their impact on the world right because we want to know that natasha is a legendary assassin right she has destabilized countries right she has um, killed monarchs and ministers and uh, presidents and corrupt people and done some crazy stuff brought down um, terrorist organizations on her own Right, but then you see the scale of what they um she has done and what the actual Black Widow program has done throughout the entire world, right? Um, so it's just so fascinating. Just that, and I'm just talking about the intro, bro. This is crazy, right? But there's as I said, even in the movie, I would say about the first half an hour of it really was just black widow 
really. And I liked it. I really enjoyed what I was watching, right, um, with it. And then you saw Taskmaster early. Taskmaster's a little bit of a sore spot. So, um, Taskmaster was a good character, yeah? But there just wasn't enough of Taskmaster, bro. There's weren't enough of Taskmaster. Um, it, it wasn't the real Taskmaster, was it? Right? Right, Taskmaster is one of the best fighters in the Marvel Universe. In the entire world, right? Taskmaster. Because he can learn anything. He's got photographic memory. He can learn any single fighting style. He learns your moves in an instant. Instantly. Right? And so, when you see Taskmaster, they, they, essentially they just put Taskmaster as... Can just copy right can just copy your moves and what you do right but you do see a little bit more from taskmaster and taskmaster pretty much is unstoppable in this movie unstoppable unbeatable doesn't lose a fight the only fight that taskmaster lost was the last end fight and taskmaster only won lost that fight on a technicality right because black widow um, switched on this device that releases these um, that diffuses the, the brainwashing nanite program right that is inside her um, you know that's inside all of the um, black widows and everything like that which is another point that I really didn't like about this movie it's the whole nanite plot point yeah it's it's so it's so bad man it just turns everything into there's no consequence there's no resolve in terms of the black widows right they don't know what they're doing so immediately there's no consequence there's no repercussion there's nothing they could kill hundreds of people they didn't know what they were doing it's not their fault so who is responsible? Nobody. Right? It's a... I just don't like that kind of stuff. You know? And just in general, when I'm watching a movie, there's one thing I can't get up my brain. Even though there's things that I did enjoy about the movie. There's a lot I enjoyed about the movie. As I said, I'll give the movie an 8 out of 10. I just hate the fact that Black Widow is dead. This whole movie is about a dead character. Godlike character. But she's dead. Mate, I mean, I get it, bro. I get it. Somebody had to die, right? In order for, you know, the stakes to um, be high enough for the bigger picture, for it to mean um, something. You know, when they get the gauntlet, the Infinity Gauntlet. I understand, bro. You know, but if you're going to make a plan on making a movie with this character, yeah? You kill her off? Is there no one else you could have killed off? You have to kill the character that you're planning on making um, a bigger story point with. Yeah? And they make a big deal. Yeah? Which I get it. Her ledger is red. Her ledger is drenched in blood. Yeah? I understand. This is the Black Widow movie. Show me the, show me the red in her ledger. Show me. Show me why she is after so much. Um, she wants to like repent. She wants forgiveness. Why? Why? I need to know. I want to know. We ain't never going to know now. Because the movie is done. <sighs> it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate, man. Um, and, and as I said before... The Nanite plot point, it's its a cheat, you know, it, it basically saves their humanity, like the Black Widows and anybody that has been uh, brainwashed by it, and it absorbs them of any type of guilt for their actions, you know, and then, you know, it just allows them to create any scenario in which they can explain, you know, away or just you know they don't need to tell a well-written story at all you know um 
There's no consequences. There's no repercussions. There's no stakes. Nothing. They're brainwashed. It's not their fault. I don't like it. I don't like it. It just that kind of thing is just such a a a glaring blatant um form of as a a plot manipulation, a plot device that can just it can get round anything. You know, so you can have a hundred people doing like mad crazy killings, so it's just the idea of the Black Widows, they are just, they're literally just, they're just bots. If they were true assassins, yeah? Like, let's say, for example, like, the Bourne Identity. Like Jason Bourne, all that type of stuff, right? With Treadstone. And they were, like, um, created killers. That would have been awesome. They all have their own individual personalities. Um, their own resolves, their own training. You know, their own way of fighting. They're not bots. But in this, just because of the nanite, that brainwash system, they feel like bots. And the idea of the Black Widow program, the Red Room, is amazing, bro. There was a bit where the guy, I can't remember his name, um, Dirkov, the leader of the, the man that created the Red Room. And he said something that, it, it kind of made me gasp, man. Like, it's kind of like, wow. Yeah, he said, I have tapped into the world's greatest but unused resource. Girls, women. And when he said that, I was like, oh. he's right. You know? And it's like, it's like, it's like, it's the most powerfulest tool that nobody is looking at. I've hard, I found a way to harness it. And then he shows Black Widow, like, a board on the, on the wall of, like, the world and all the Black Widow agents. Deep. Deep. But then, the, but the movie feels comical. Right? Because the movie don't take itself seriously at all, man. There's such a a light-hearted feeling about this movie, right? Which I wasn't opposed to, yeah? I don't want all doom and gloom, but you got to remember, this is Black Widow we're talking about, yeah? Um... You have to... She's sinister. The world of Black Widow is a sinister world. It's not a nice, um, rosy, um, sunshine and rainbows world. You gotta remember, Black Widow, she is an absolute force of nature. Yeah? We're gonna get to see it. We're gonna get to see it, man. She is legendary. The amount of countries that have been destabilized, powerful, powerful um, organizations, you know, that have been infiltrated and destroyed by Black Widow. Cor as I said before, corrupt presidents, monarchs, ministers, powerful people. Um, you know, she has brought them down with her schemes, sabotage and infiltration. I mean, that's what the whole Black Widow Red Room does. But she is legendary because she has done the, had the most impact um, in human history next to um, Winter Soldier. And we didn't get to see the force of nature that she is. Man, it's winding me up just thinking about it. And it, again, she doesn't get a good movie. Continuous disrespect, bro. And I love this character, so I can't, I can't allow this movie, because I like Black Widow. <coughs> I like her in the movies, and I like Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. She's like the perfect casting for Black Widow. I've loved her since Iron Man 2. That was my favourite version of Black Widow, by the way. You know, um, what was it? <sighs> 
Avengers didn't like that movie at all. Didn't um, well, I'm not gonna say I didn't like it at all, but it wasn't a, it, to me, it wasn't a good movie. Yeah, but the way they did Black Widow in that movie, nah, nah, bro. Like that movie to me, disrespect her, hundred percent. And then you had what was the next movie? I think it was Winter Soldier. I think it was Winter Soldier. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but even in Winter Soldier, she was a utility. She wasn't great in that movie. She was just. She was just there. You know, she had the role, but she was like, yeah, as I said, she was just a sidekick to Steve Rogers. That was it. Come on, man. And then you have Age of Ultron. She was a, she was a side note. They didn't take her seriously at all, man. Again, not even, not even a good role for a brilliant character. And then you have Civil War again. And she was just, to me, in that movie, she was a... She was like eye candy, right? She wasn't serious, man. They didn't do her seriously in that movie, bro. You know, I mean, I did like when she was fighting with Clint and just the dynamics that you could blatantly see that her and um, Hawkeye, sorry, um, had, right? But she just wasn't. She was just eye candy in that movie. She wasn't. She wasn't valuable, right? Somebody like Black Widow. You have such a significant character like that, and you're doing nothing with her. Like it's it's, it's puzzling to me. Truly puzzling and perplexing, right? Um, and what was the next movie? I think that was it. Iron Man two. Avengers, Age of Ultron, I said Civil War, didn't I? And I said Winter Soldier. Yeah, I think that was all the movies that she was in. And Iron Man 2, that was the best version of Black Widow to me, right? And then that was followed by Endgame, well, Infinity War, and then Endgame, which were easily... The best versions of her. Free. Free. Especially in Endgame. Incredible. Incredible. The evolution of that character, man. From, for me personally, from Endgame to Infinity, from Infinity War to Endgame was just incredible to see, right? Um, but she, as I say, she didn't. She, and she, this is her movie, Black Widow, and it's it's Black Widow, and it's about her in name only. Because the movie wasn't really about her; it's about passing the torch onto the new Black Widow, Yelena. But we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, let's put that off for now, right? Um, but yeah, you have um, such a interesting character, you know, like Natasha, and I just feel like they have they kind of let this one slip. Right, because as I said, they could have done so much more with her, but they didn't. You know, they made a comical movie, right? I truly believe that somebody wanted to make a good movie, right? But maybe the higher ups just had different ideas for Black Widow, right? Um, as I said before, you know, Black Widows, they're brainwashed. I mean, look, to be honest with you, I thought they were operatives. But look, what do I know, right? I'm just a guy that watches the movies, just like everybody else. Um, and then, you know, they had the the Red Room, yeah? And to me, personally, Red Room weren't done well at all, yeah? They showed glimpses of the Red Room in the intro. Is that it? Seriously. The best you want to show me with the Red Room is in the intro, which is an amazing intro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about this movie, right? This movie was like, um, it had so many good concepts, but it was like a stew, yeah? With just everything thrown in there, and 
no real consideration was given to how to organize everything and make it conducive to a a potent impactful movie because it was too busy getting in its own way by being comical and just not focusing on one plot point and seeing it through it's like i can give you an example um personally i like ice cream yeah jelly's pretty cool i like apples um and i like oranges yeah am i going to throw them all into a bowl and mix them up no i'm not they all sound good independently but if you put them together and try to eat it i don't think it's gonna taste too good yeah and that's what this movie is they had a whole load of good ingredients and ideas and characters and story points and they just threw it all and mixed it all together and expected something uh, wonderful to happen and it just didn't for the purist i can't forgive it man not that i can't forgive it because it's not a bad movie yeah but i can't allow them that's a better way to put it i can't allow them for it i can't overlook just because i love the character and it is actually a good movie as i said before i'd give the movie an eight out of ten right but the red room bro i wanted to see um an amazing story a traumatic story of the red room you know and how godlike you have to be to overcome the experience of the red room they didn't show it you know you see all these kids getting kidnapped I want to see her story. I want to see Yelena's story. What did they have to go through when they were separated, right? Because Natasha was older, right? So she was put into the field quicker. But what happened on their different paths? Because and there's, I don't want to hear that. Oh, they couldn't have showed. They could have showed it because there was a lot of things that they showed in that movie that they didn't need to show. There was a lot of things that happened that. I thought to myself, why am I seeing this? This is not adding to the character. This is your one chance to show this character for us to understand her, bring her to the modern day, because this movie set in between, I think it is Civil War and Infinity War. I think so. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, no, it is, yeah, yeah, I do believe it is slotted in there, right, uh, but as I say, you've got to see, as I said, the intro, where you got to see, like, the kids, and so it started off well, so it just shows that they could have done something, and it was just a massive, as I said, massive opportunity missed, you know, and um, just doing something, you know, showing the darker side, the more sinister side of the MCU, Right, we could have seen so much more with the characters. Um, I mean, even when you talk about action, movie didn't even have that much action. To be honest with you, there was more action Iron Man two, where Black Widow. Um, do you remember there was a part where Black Widow infiltrated, not infiltrated, but she she did. She infiltrated Hammer Industries, and then she took on the entire of Hammer's security detail. In a whole building. And she wiped out the entire building of Hammer's security. On her own. There was more action in that scene than there was in this whole movie. I'll put it like that. Yeah. And whenever there was a good fight scene. They would cut away to something that I don't care about. Man. Like. As I said. For every... One thing that they showed that was awesome, they would do something that was not great to offset it. And it was frustrating just seeing that. Um, I don't know, man. You know, it's just crazy to me. You know, this movie, it was called Black Widow, but it wasn't about her. She was like the least important um, character in this entire movie. If I've been honest, the movie was about Yelena. 
her sister. I'm passing on the torch to her. You know, look, that's what it is, man. I don't want to say it. A lot of people don't want to say it, but that's what it is. Yeah. Um, she was literally just a conduit, you know, to passing the torch onto the next generation and expanding the MCU because it's going to be a Hawkeye TV show, right? Uh, I think it's with Katie Bishop, isn't it as well? And they already said that Yelena is going to be in that movie and we know what role she's going to be in that movie. Because in the end of this movie, in like the um, after the credits, you do see, what's that woman's name again? Contessa something. And she doesn't like to be called Val. She's like, don't call me Val. Um, I can't remember her full name, man. Let's just call her Val. Sorry, I know you don't want to be called Val, but Val, yeah. And we already know from the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier that that woman, Contessa, Val, she is building a group, but we don't even know who she is. Whether she's part of a new shield or whether she's like, like there's like a group in the Marvel comics that were called the Vanguard, right? Um, which is one of her organizations. There wasn't um, US agent in there, nor was there the Yelena's Black Widow, but this might be the MCU's version of it, or she might be Hydra, you know, a special version of Hydra, rebirth version of Hydra, we don't know, right? But, um, so they've already got a um, US agent. And now they have a Black Widow. Bro, that's crazy. So look, now we're going to see what they're going to do um, with that character. But I'm fascinated. And I'm just, please don't screw it up with that character, Yelena. Because she was like, essentially, she was like, they did put everything on her shoulders, but she was the best thing about the movie. She was the only thing about this movie, because the whole movie, I felt, was about passing the torch onto her. That they didn't emphasise, they didn't put the spotlight on Black Widow enough. When they did put the spotlight on Black Widow, as I said, the first half an hour of this movie was Black Widow, and it was really good just seeing her the way she moves like just you know getting to her to seeing her open up as a character listen to her talk watching her interactions watching her moving through the world i liked it right but then it you know everything started to open up with the i maiden with red guardian with yelena uh, with the agent you know with the um i think that is it dregoff um dekoff's uh, the guy the leader of the red room Right, and then you see all these characters start coming in, and then the, that's when the movie starts going all over the place. Right, but look, man, Black Widow, she deserved better, man. She was like the least important character in a movie in which she was supposed to be the most important character. Right, you know, they didn't go, as I said, they didn't go into detail about anything in this movie at all. Nothing. They would show you one thing. And then move to another film. Like they would show you um, a story where she was um, talking about her living with the Iron Maiden, Red Guardian, and Elena as her family. Then they would talk about her real mother. Then they would talk about the, the Red Room. Then they'll talk about we're being chased down by these people. I think we can't be running. We need to take the fight to them. Okay. Then let's go to Budapest. And then they get attacked by Black Widows. And then there's this, and then there's that, and then just keeps on dotting all over the place. It never stays on one topic and resolves one topic before it moves on to something else. And that's what I mean, where it's like a jack of all trades, master of none. It's just like a stew, and they just throw everything in there, and they don't even go into any detail. Right? And they could have, because they could have just not put in certain parts of the movie that were pointless and then put in parts of the movie that would have meant something and adding to her character right because already you're losing me because she's a dead character and that winds me up already the fact that i'm watching a movie that is kind that is pretty cool yeah is, is getting in its own way by being too comical not taking itself seriously and not giving the character the just do that she deserves right but then on top of all of that it's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. And despite of that, it's still a good movie. That's what says, shows me that, well, maybe it's the character. 
Maybe it's just the character and the world is so good and the production value is so high that despite of all the... As a purist, yeah, and that's where I'm coming from. If you're not a purist, you're not going to affect any of the problems that I'm having with this movie, right? Um, but yeah, you know, so as I was saying, um, it was just there to like pass the torch and Yelena was like the best element of this whole movie. And even with Yelena, right? Uh, she had certain scenes where she got it, yeah? She understood what was going on. And she was acting with the seriousness of the implications of what was being said. But then somebody else would do something comical or not take the scene seriously... So you have one person having good acting while everyone else is not. So then the scene just kind of falls flat. And it's just like, oh man. I'm look, I see you, Elena. I see you. Right? Um, but yeah, you know, so it's, yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, you know, the there's like, as I said, the um, good fight. One of the best fights in the, in the film, you know, was where Black Widow was fighting against Black Widow. Yelena versus Natasha. Yeah. Uh, that was good enough. It was good enough. It was a good fight. It was a good fight. Yeah. And what you would expect for Widow versus Widow and their sisters. Right. Because uh, they have a much different relationship in the comic books. Yeah. Um, there is a love there. But it's a dark, twisted love. I mean, look, I'm not going to say that I know a lot about Yelena. Because I don't. I've only must have read like um, two, maybe two. Two, maybe I think about two story arcs with her. In my entire life of Black Widow's sister. Right? So if you know more about that character. If they do have a loving relationship. Loving um, affection for each other. Let me know the story. Because I'll be honest with you. I don't know it, yeah. So um, yeah. Um, you had um, who else did you have? You had Ta Taskmaster. Taskmaster was cool, man. You know, uh, I wouldn't say I liked the character, right? Because it was not, it's not really, t it's not Taskmaster, is it? You know, let's have it, let's have it right. It's not the real Taskmaster, but it was a, it was a good Taskmaster. You know, it was decent, right? Um, not on screen enough. Nowhere near enough. No character development for the character. The character just um, pops in and pops out like a. It's like a, um, it's like a bodega version of Terminator, right? As I said before, an unstoppable, an unbeatable bodega version of Terminator, but still a bodega version of a Terminator, right? Um, but yeah, you know, did the job well. Was menacing. When um, Taskmaster was on the screen. Um, the one thing I would say about Taskmaster is. Taskmaster got such a big connection to Natasha. A massive plot point. And it wasn't emphasised at all, man. You know, because you find out that Taskmaster is actually the little girl that Black Widow killed, blew up, to escape the Red Room. She wanted to prove her loyalty to S.H.I.E.L.D. by killing off um, Drakov. I know I'm saying his name wrong, right? The leader of the Red Room, the guy that created the Red Room. And she wanted out of that and to escape and prove her loyalty. So the only way she could do it was the daughter of Dragoff get her to get to get close to them to the dad and then blow her up, blow the little girl up along with her dad. Yeah, the Dragoff guy. And she didn't die. She managed to survive. And he made her into Taskmaster. Which in itself is a good plot point, but again, no development in the character. The character was hardly there. When the character was on screen, the character was definitely menacing, 
definitely made an impact, but it wasn't real Taskmaster, right? It's development, is everything, man. Just show me the character. Let me know something about the character, man. Just popping in and out like the Terminator, like the Bodega Terminator. Like, for a character like Term M, um, Taskmaster, even if you're not a Marvel fan, You've heard of Taskmaster, you know? If you've played any video games, if you've read any comics, if you've played any of the Spider-Man games, if you've played the Avengers game, you see Taskmaster. Everybody's going to know who he is in some um, form or other. I don't know, man. So, um, yeah, yeah, they just, like, brought her in, made her brainwashed, which, again really pisses me off it's so lazy bro you know just i don't know man i don't know just there's no resolve imagine if taskmaster was not brainwashed it was conscious thinking right driven this was the um person that tried to kill me that blew me up that changed my life that ruined my life tried to kill my dad made me into this but they did it as i don't know man i don't know so she, she was just a bot she's just a bot man you know and any scenes with the I did feel like there wasn't enough espionage in this movie. And any scene that you did see with the Black Widows. Uh, they weren't dangerous. I never felt any danger coming from them. Because they were bots. They were brainwashed bots. So they were not as intuitive. They were not as resourceful as um, Yelena or Natasha. Because they are cognizant. That's the big difference between them and the other widows. They're cognizant. They, these, the brainwashed um, black widows did not seem, you know, um, cognizant. You know, they seemed like they were dedicated to a purpose. Like when they were chasing, they were chasing. When they were shooting, they were shooting. When they were saying orders to each other, they were doing that. But it wasn't, they were like bots. You know, and then you did see a scene in the movie where um, you saw the leader of the Red Room made one of the Black Widows kill themselves, right? And that was like a kind of like a powerful moment, but it was just offset by the movie in general not taking itself seriously. Um, prior to that happening, Black Widow literally fell from the top of a building smashed onto multiple ledges and it landed on her feet and there is no explanation as to is she got some type of powers that we don't know about because she did all of that and landed on her feet now if she has got any type of powers or there's something we should know about Please inform us, or is that something that they learned from the Red Room? And if there is, tell me, show us. Nope, she just fell all that way, literally from the top of the building, smashed into everything imaginable. Body got mangled up, and then she still landed on her feet. Okay. Sure, sure, you know, and I just felt like there were certain things that there was just like the scene should have had gravitas, but they didn't, and it's all because you start from the beginning. If at the beginning you don't take yourself seriously, you make a joke out of everything, guess what's gonna happen? I ain't gonna take it seriously. Right? And that's the reason that even though Taskmaster was a threat, I just couldn't take Taskmaster too seriously. Because I already... I, feel, I know, we all know that no matter what happens, Natasha's not going to die. 
you know, Yelena's not going to die because we know she's going to be in Hawkeye. There's no consequence to anything that is happening. Everyone's going to make it out alive. Everyone's going to make it out okay. So it's just... It is what it is. You know? Uh, but yeah. You know, and also, uh, I want to say, like, little fun fact. Um, the Iron Maiden, yeah, is married to Daniel Craig, who's James Bond. And he's, of course, his movie was Quantum of Solace. And the woman that played Taskmaster was one of the protagonists in one of the main protagonists in the James Bond movie. She was on like the posters. I think her name is Olga something, Olga something, Olga Kulienko or something like that, yeah. 10 out of 10. Absolutely beautiful woman, bro. Yeah. Unbelievable. And she was in that movie. Yeah. And what's his name again? Something Harper. The Red Guardian. I can't remember his name. I'll say David Harper or something like that. Yeah. And he was in Quantum of Solace as well. And also, when they were originally talking about releasing Black Widow last year, the reason they weren't they were struggling to release it was because um, James Bond was looking to release in the same month, but they didn't want to release Black Widow in the same month as James Bond. So it almost seems like James Bond has kind of got like a weird connection to this movie, you know, you know, being Iron Maiden. Rachel Weiss, who's the Iron Maiden in this movie, and she's married to Daniel Craig, and Daniel Craig was in Quantum of Solace, and Quantum of Solace, um, the person that is Taskmaster in this Black Widow movie is, you know, you know, that was one of the characters in that movie with um, Harper. It's crazy, so yeah, little fun fact that I saw. Because when I saw her face, I was like, what? Wait a second, isn't that the woman from... James Bond. Yeah, so that kind of like blew my mind, right? So yeah, just wanted to throw that in there. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just unfortunate that there wasn't any action sequences that were any good in this movie. You know, um, the visuals were amazing, yeah? Well, the CG wasn't the best CG I've ever seen, right? But yeah, visuals were amazing, right? Like, there was a big bit with, like, a helicarrier, yeah, in this movie. And you saw it crashing. You know what I just realised? Did they copy-paste elements of... I think they copy-pasted elements of... Uh... Civil War. Or it might be Winter Soldier. I'm not too sure which one it was. Because there was a point. In one of the movies right. Where they. Um, they looked. Through. They were fighting. Yeah. They were going through that normal part of the story. Right. They had conflict with each other, had issue, fought against some villains, had um, drama, lost, had to escape, collect themselves, regroup, find a secluded area, find out, make a tactical plan, power themselves up, then go back to battle. Find the helicarrier. Helicarrier crashes. Um, does some mad epic crash. Mad events are happening. Final boss fight. The end. That does sound like Civil War. And that's what happened in this movie as well. I think we've just exposed the fact that they copy pasted Civil War into this movie. Hmm. Hmm. 
interesting. I need to watch Civil War again. Or it might be Winter Soldier. Hmm. That's, that's pretty bad, actually. But, you know, never mind. It's Marvel. Um, and, yeah. I mean, you had, like, who else did you have? You had um, Red Guardian. I didn't understand him. I'll be honest with you. I didn't understand. You know, he was a complete... To me, he was a complete joke. Complete joke in that movie. Um... His whole thing was that he loved his daughters, right? And that was his whole thing. And he was the um, Russian Winter Soldier. Look, I'll be honest with you. I didn't see love for his daughters. Maybe it was in that three years that he lived with them. But, you know, they didn't really show it. They only talked about it. So, you know. I mean, that love might have had something to do with the point where he was telling them that his daughters are the strongest. Followed by them getting um, drugged, you know, injected into the neck and then taken away. That might have something to do with his love. But, you know whatever is what it is yeah and um yeah yeah i just don't know man yeah you know they should they should have given this character what she deserved a godlike movie you know and forever and a day it'll go down in history as she never got her own movie she never got it uh four got his godlike movie and four ragnarok Black Panther got his movie. Captain America got two godlike movies in Winter Soldier and Civil War. Iron Man got a godlike movie in Iron Man 1. You know, and he had a very good performance in uh, Avengers. Right, even though the movie wasn't good, Iron Man was the MVP. He was everything in that movie, right? Um, so he has had, Iron Man has had, even Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron was not a good movie. But... Iron Man, he had standout performance. It was incredible. The, to be honest with you, Avengers and Age of Ultron, Iron Man made those movies. If it wasn't for that, for Iron Man, those movies would have just crumbled. They would have crumbled, man. You know, um, so yeah, it's just sad to me that, you know, you have a godlike character, you know, in Black Widow and she just didn't get anything. But now we got a new Black Widow, right? And she's godlike. You know, so she has to get her own movie. We already know she's going to be in the Hawkeye movie. Um, but you have to give her a proper backstory, man. Show us her with the Red Room, what she went through, um, how powerful she is, the impact of her. You know, because, look, it can be done. Because just from the intro of this movie, yeah, I keep talking about that intro. Because that intro of this movie, Black Widow, is godlike, yeah? You saw the absolute power of the guy that um, owns, that controls the Red Room, right? Because you saw him with the images of him with, like, powerful um, political um, figures throughout history, yeah? So you know that fuckeries has been going on in multiple countries, man, and he can control the Black Widows. So it's just, like, little things can be done, to show the impact of a character, but then fortify it with the movie, right? With the visual, with the storytelling, mate. And there was another nice thing that I liked, right? Was Yelena, she was wearing like this kind of vest, right? She was saying to Black Widow, this was my, the first thing I ever bought when I got money, right? And I could buy whatever I wanted. This vest means a lot to me. It's awesome. Look, it's got pockets here. You can do this. You can do that. It's such a little simple thing. But it's because it's the first thing she's ever decided this is what I want. As she got it, it meant something to her. Right? It's like One Piece with Luffy and the hat. Don't cuss the hat. Don't cuss the, don't cuss the jacket. Because even that widow was kind of taking a piss out of the jacket. When she expressed what the jacket meant to her. Sorry. Right. When she expressed what the jacket meant to her. She said. It's a nice, it's a nice jacket. And then you see that widow wearing that jacket in Endgame and Infinity War. So then that jacket thing that she's wearing when you watch Infinity War again. And Endgame is going to mean something. Well, I don't think it was in Infinity War. I think it was just an Endgame. No, I don't think it was in um, Endgame. I think it was just an Infinity War. Right? Like, when you saw... Because how godlike that window is. They 
Steve Rogers, I mean, it was Steve Rogers, um, Sam Wilson and Natasha Romanoff that beat the Black Order. But mostly, it was Natasha and Steve that beat Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight. Both of them on their own, bro. It was, to be honest with you, most of that fight, it was those two because... Skull, Witch, and Vision, you know, they got bust up. They got bust up, man. And Natasha just came in with Steve Rogers and handled them. And Natasha is the one that delivered the blow, yeah, to call for Sclave. That put that took him out of the fight, bro. So Natasha is godlike, man. Bro. Bro. And that came first. So how can you have Endgame, Infinity War, know what you have to do with this character and then give us Black Widow. As I said, the movie's not a bad movie. It's an 8 out of 10. But the purest in me is dying. Purest in me is dying watching this movie because they could have done so much more, dude. They could have done so much more. I just feel like the whole movie was a missed opportunity because the movie was just... They had so much ridiculous... Stuff it was like I say, it's the most marvelous movie ever that it just didn't want to take itself seriously. They'll do something that was kind of serious or kind of impactful or deep, and then they would do something stupid or something that doesn't make sense that kind of like breaks the story. And I literally just feel like they were just doing that and then just going, I know, but let's have fun. And you're like, oh, sure, okay. This is a Black Widow movie. I mean, if they did this with, like, Thor Ragnarok or Guardians of the Galaxy, right, or Iron Man, I wouldn't really mind. But this is a serious character with, in her wheelhouse, her wheelhouse is espionage. It's dealing with the world of humans and... You know, humans using mad technologies and superhumans and stuff like that. You know, this hasn't got, like, any of the crazy, fantastical stuff, right? Um, I don't know, man. You know, you know, they could have told an incredible story, you know. I mean, look, at the end of the day, she's supposed to have blood in her ledger. Her ledger's supposed to be drenched, soaked in blood. Where was it? Where was it? I didn't see it. I don't know. Nowhere to be seen. You know, uh, but, you know, at least in this movie, as I said before, we got to see the, may potentially, I'll say, like, the birth, maybe, of Vanguard, you know, um, the assassination unit, whichever it is, because now they've got US agent and, you know, Black Widow. So the future's bright, you know, and they've got Taskmaster. Taskmaster is with the Black Widows, because, you know, Yelena has got the, um, t um, the Black Widows with her. So she's going to be a very powerful um force in the marvel cinematic universe it's fascinating what are they gonna do with these characters i mean knowing marvel and how many plates they're spinning they're probably gonna like screw it up you know but i i hope they don't man um so i said this movie i'll give it eight out of ten yeah um i said it's a good movie but it's just it was just too jokey for me you know red guardian Complete Joker, not serious at all. Iron Maiden, why was she in the movie? They wasted her. She's going to be such a, a potent character. And they just wasted her. Black Widow, I just feel like they just didn't, they didn't respect her enough. They didn't respect her enough. They didn't want to take her seriously. They didn't want to make her the focal point while passing on the torch to her. You know, um, and then you had Taskmaster, who was interestingly done, but not well executed. There was just not enough presence of that character. There wasn't, um, you know, first of all, foremost, yeah, it's the fighting prowess, pretty unbeatable, right? So I can't say that fighting prowess wasn't good because didn't lose a fight. You know, Taskmaster didn't lose a fight. It's just like there was just no development in that character. To be absolutely honest with you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen, right? There's not going to be any more Black Widow. This is the end of it. And it's unfortunate, but 
it is what it is. And at least now, you know, you can watch Civil War, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Black Widow, and then Infinity War and Endgame. And it's got this that can slot in there. So yeah, that was me going in, right, on uh, Black Widow. I told you this is going to be a bar burner. So let me know what do you think about um, what's going to happen with um, Yelena going after Clint, you know, because um, that woman, um, Val, yeah, she's tricked her, said, Clint, this guy, Clint, Hawkeye, he's the reason that Natasha is dead. Right, when we know that's not the reason, because he didn't want her to die, yeah, and he was trying his best to stop her from jumping off the cliff, right, and sacrificing herself, for, I think it was for the Soul Stone, or something like that, you know, which gives her an important role, but why does she have to die, she's such an important character, and you're going to do a movie with her, and you make a, a blockbuster movie on a dead character, but whatever so um yeah let me know what you guys think about that your thoughts if you've watched the movie and um yeah warriors thanks for watching um stay tuned and we're here laters